We know only how to function using the body, the senses, the speech and the mind, the intellect. And this has become a default process. We think this is the only way to function in life. This is the only way if I'm holding this, this is the only way to hold this. The only way is to see if I don't have eyes, I cannot see anything. If I have ears, I cannot hear anything. If I don't have ears, I cannot hear anything. This is true at the physical level. This is true at the sensory level. This is true at the mental level. But this or intellectual level. But all this knowledge is only temporary knowledge. That which is grasped through the senses and the mind and the intellect, it's only temporary knowledge. Because what the senses see, it keeps changing. What the mind imagines or projects, it keeps changing. What the intellect conceives or becomes convinced of, that also keep, continuously keeps changing. But it keeps believing who because of this continuous interaction I believe it's happening so fast that I believe this is true because I don't see the body changing I don't see because my attention is on the objects my attention is not uh, uh, on the constant vision because I keep hearing the words my attention is not on the constant hearing ability my attention is on hearing if I'm listening I'm li I, I'm good I'm healthy if I'm not listening what is happening to my ears where am I going wrong and this type of approach to life this type of approach in which we feel that we are the instruments, body, breath, mind, intellect, senses, etc. It keeps us in the loop of 
relative knowledge. It keeps us in the loop of changing knowledge. But giving us and giving it, giving us an uh, idea that it is continuous. We feel this whole world is continuous. We feel the senses are continuous. We feel the mind is continuous. See? We feel we are continuous all the way from birth to death. death. This false feeling of continuity Well, this feeling of continuity, not false feeling of continuity, this feeling of continuity is actually the nature of the Atma. But rather than recognizing that we are the Atma, this feeling of continuity, which is the nature of Atma, is superimposed is projected on all objects. Those objects can be convictions, can be imaginations, can be the sensory perceptions, can be the world. On everything it is projected. It is superimposed. <coughs> And we need to come out of that. See, first we have to recognize that the continuous principle is not the world. The continuous principle is not the senses. Continuous principle is not the mind. Continuous principle is not the intellect. But the continuous, continuous principle is not even the ego. Continuous principle is the Atmic principle, which is beyond the changing waker, the changing dream and the changing sleeper. That is the continuous one and that I am. For this, for coming to this, we uh, come to the scriptures, we do the sadhana, but that sadhana that is th that we come to do is also external. I have to do something. Where will you do the sadhana? You will do it at the body level or you will do it at the breath level or you will do it at the sensory level or you will do it at the speech level or you will do the sadhana at the mental level or you will do the sadhana at the intellectual level. Again, we are caught up in the same. <laughs> that is outside. But that is the only way we know. There is no other way we know. If I don't use this whole list that I just presented you, without these, I don't know how to function. Without these, there is no functioning. So our teachers, our realized masters, our scriptures, Vedas, Upanishads, they again and again roar that, yes, we do not know how to, even though we are always functioning, we are always the Atma, but we don't know that at this moment because our obsession with mind, intellect, mem memory, ego, senses and body. And they found a way out. How we can, if we are addicted to working through these instruments, through this equipment, cross, subtle and causal, why not we use it It wants to think, mind wants to think, intellect wants to be convinced, 
senses want to illuminate something or the other. Body wants to uh, be active doing something or the other. So the masters and scriptures bring us our own experience to light and show us the mirror. They say, look, when do you feel at the body level? When do you feel the most rested? In the waking, in the dream or in the sleep? Immediately your answer is, in the sleep I am most rested. So what is sleep? Sleep is that space or that uh, state where there is no activity. How good? No activity. Very good. What else is going on? Um, I got no thoughts. Oh, very good. No thoughts also. No physical activity also. No sensory activity also because there is no dream in sleep. Are you convinced of anything? Are you, are the mana, buddhi, chitta, hankar, mind, intellect, memory and ego, are they functioning at that time? No, they are also not functioning. This is the first data that is presented to the student or the seeker. First, you observe your own assess your own life and find out and look at where in your daily life of 24 hours you are you are at the most restful position. And we've all come to the conclusion that the most restful position at the entire equipment level is the deep sleep state. Then the next proposition that is put in front of the seeker is, is it possible, is it possible for you to recognize that you just came to the conclusion that the equipment is absolutely quiet, body is still, breath is uh, that me, uh, is uh, uh, not disturbing your sleep, your senses are not disturbing, your mind is not disturbing, your intellect is not disturbing. Meaning the equipment is not be, becoming a problem, a challenge to the person. Yeah, I accept. Then the masters and scriptures say, is it possible for you to recreate that disposition wherein you, the person, do not remain disturbed by the equipment, gross, subtle and causal, even while you are awake? Is it possible? Can you try? Can you give it a go? Now, when this proposition is made to the student, he gets fired up. He says, oh, is that possible? Is it possible for me to be restful while I'm while in the waking plane, in the dream plane, in the deep sleep I am already? Is it possible for me to be so restful that bliss, that silence which I was experiencing in deep sleep, is it possible for me to experience it in the waking and the dream? The masters and the scriptures say, yes, it is possible. Thus, all the various scriptures were written. How it is possible, that is what the scriptures are. So those who are very gross oriented, for them it is told, don't be disturbed by what you see or what you hear, what you touch, what you taste, etc. Those who are at the mental level, emotional level, them, they were told, hey, make your mind single pointed, chant the name of the Lord. Those who are intellect oriented, they were told, hey, uh, uh, understand, contemplate, meditate, that 
you are the untouched one that you are the uninfluenced one you are the illuminator of all the changes you cannot tell a person who is at the gross level you can only tell him that look don't get disturbed by the world what you see don't get disturbed by what you see don't get disturbed by what you hear that is the instructions given there but when a person is at the intellectual level he is told hey don't get disturbed by anything you are not disturbed even by the waking dream and deep sleep by that time when he comes here he says he starts understanding he says yes i don't get disturbed that is true i never looked at it like this before that the waker dreamer sleeper are coming and going but i am not i am i am still the same and he starts he understands but he cannot it's not clicking and that clicking is not taking place because he is still thinking <laughs> and that thinking has to subside and that if you try to slow down to you try to stop the thinking it will become more thinking it must happen as a result of contemplation as a it must happen as a result of correct focus and the focus is on our attention is on that i am the illuminator of all the experiences first i was attached to all the experiences i was the experiencer i was the hearer smeller taster seer then subtle i was the thinker i was the intellectualizer now i am the one who is undisturbed i do not take the ownership of whatever is taking place in life when this is practiced for some time or we contemplate that i am the unchanging principle first be convinced of it first understand that i am the unchanging undisturbed continuously illuminating principle it is in my light that all the convictions thoughts sensory perceptions of the world all this is possible because i am this is understood till here it is okay the next leap in contemplation comes because till now everything is understood by way of thoughts and convictions when the mind becomes when you come to this point that everything is because of the the illumination that i am what is this illumination what is its location when you find, try to look for the location and everything then again because the student is asking some answer has to be given we say the heart chakra or the throat chakra or the agya chakra but for a matured uh, seeker he, he the, that seeker is told that that you are the location to yourself if you look for a location somewhere else if you look outside then you look for a temple and go for tirth yatra if you look for a location within the body then you will practice kundalini abhyas this chakra that chakra etc here it is told you are the location to yourself so if you are asking for what is the location of the atma what is the location of the witnessing consciousness you are the location don't look for it in the in the intellect don't look for it in the mind don't look for it in the senses don't look for it in the body and don't look for it in the world 
you are the location unto yourself. When this is to shared with the student, if it is a mature student, he will not ask how do how I am the location unto myself. An unprepared student will say, I am the location. How do I get to that? Again, he is creating some journey, some distance between himself and the location that he is himself. So first, this is the systematic way of coming to be the unchanging one. And as we recognized we are the location to ourselves, we are the light to ourselves, we are the conscious space in which everything is going on. Automatically, the silence, the bliss that we enjoyed in the deep sleep that deep sleep also came and went. Deep sleep is nothing but conscious space, but we don't know that we are conscious there. Now we have come to this point where we are location unto ourselves, we are the light unto ourselves. What is this light? We don't have to, we can't, uh, maximum we can say is it is Satchidanam Swarup, Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Swarup, it is all pervasive, all inclusive. It is in and through everything, yet it is independent. It is one without a second. All these are very wonderful words, but they have to be contemplated upon. And in that contemplation, we remain awake without going to sleep. And when we remain awake without going to sleep, And in that contemplation, the result of that contemplation is no thought, no conviction, no sensory perception, nothing in this world, whether our eyes are open or closed, is able to make an impact on this illuminating principle that I am. Just like you are sitting right now, what is going on in the house or in the world is not making an impact on you. If I bring your attention, you might hear the birds chirping outside. But till I didn't tell you that, or even if you notice that, it was not making, you are not reacting, you are not uh, uh, complaining. You are undisturbed by the disturbances. Disturbances mean that which comes and goes. That which is external. So, contemplate. What is to contemplate now? Contemplate. You are the location unto yourself. Don't look for yourself in the thoughts. Don't look for yourself in the emotion. Don't look for yourself in the mind, intellect, senses or the body or the world. Bring a disposition, bring a poise wherein
I am full of myself.